Hey all here OS Reviews, in this video we're taking a closer look at the Melee Quieter 4C in 150 edition. Now if you're having deja vu, that's because the Quieter 4C was actually released in 2024, but it came originally with the Intel Celeron N100 processor, clocked up to 3.4 GHz versus the 3.6 GHz of the N150. Now it's a relatively minor refresh all things considered. There hasn't been a complete overhaul on the design and architecture of Intel's latest generation chips, and so as a result, the Quieter 5C series is not anticipated to be refreshed until next year, in 2026. So this is more of kind of an in-between incremental bump, similar to how on iPhones we used to get iPhone S's representing more of a modest improvement versus something completely next-gen. And despite it being more of a modest bump, like we said, it still represents a decent value as an entry-level, more affordable mini PC selling for roughly $200 give and take. As the name implies, this entire series are going to be fanless mini computers running on a full version of Windows, so no noises, pretty thermally efficient, and also no moving parts. As for other specs are concerned, it's actually quite impressive that in 2025, again for an entry-level $200 computer, we're now seeing 16GB of RAM. Just a few years back, it was much more common to see 8GB, sometimes even just 4 gigs, on a Chromebook, for example, in the same price range, but that's no longer the case, helping you do just a bit more in terms of multitasking. It also comes coupled with 512 gigabytes of SSD, and connectivity-wise, it can support dual 4K monitors, as well as having dual-band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5 connectivity. Melee's packaging continues to provide a postcard as kind of an Easter egg here, a quick start guide here presented right on top. Again, since this unit is completely fanless and silent, it uses the material science there to conduct heat, dissipate it more quickly, and so it's a metal surface, and as a result, it might get a little bit warmer here on the top, but that's normal. But I think it's the first time they've included a card like this. It tells us the average thermal temperature under different types of environments. For example, office documents are going to be the least stressful compared to local 4K video, compared to full load, you'll see some variance there in the temperature range, which is expected. And then further underneath here, we can find an optional mounting bracket. So if you want to put this behind a monitor or TV, it can just disappear from view. Again, for a desktop computer, remaining quite compact and slim. We even get some of those optional screws and of course just the power supply, which just like some of their other previous generation models is using USB Type-C. So it's 12 volt, 2 amps. And a closer look at the computer itself, again it remains pretty premium feeling with a metal chassis here on the side, a simple power key, and on the side there's also a Kingston lock at the very back housing all the I.O. inclusive of the dual HDMI ports, there's an Ethernet if you don't want to use Wi-Fi, power supply input, and also a full spec USB Type-C port that can also be used for reading thumb drives, providing power, 3.5mm headphone jack, and another micro SD card slot for media transfer or expanding the storage can also be found, and then on the side here we have three Three more USB full-size Type-A ports. Two of these are going to be 3.0 speeds, so a little bit faster, and then one of this is going to be the slightly slower USB 2.0 standard. Backplate is also crafted out of metal with some soft touch rubber to prevent it from sliding around. And popping off those four screws, this is what it looks like on the inside of the mini PC. Again, the side here is where you can pop in your own SSD if 512 gigabytes isn't sufficient for you, and also maybe clean it off a little bit more. We can also see the thermal tape being used here as well, so relatively again, compact layout. And here's also a size comparison with an average size phone by today's standards, around 6.5 inches. So you can see that for a full-blown mini desktop computer remaining quite compact, even if it is going to be maybe just a little bit wider versus some of the PC stick designs that we have also seen from Mealy previously. If we had to be super critical though, just like what we said before, uh, because of these tiny little micro grooves on the surface of the mini PC providing a bit more texture, it does have a tendency to maybe attract a little bit more dust or lint. And now these micro Micro grooves might actually be purposeful. It's not only for aesthetics, but it's almost like small vents to more easily dissipate the heat. However, if you want to clean this off, you may have to use compressed air or using some type of Play-Doh to keep it clean. But aside from that, overall looking quite elegant and it can stand upright as well because of the completely flat and angular sides. Although just be careful since the sides are a little on the sharp side when you're handling it. Otherwise, again, still looking quite nice from a design perspective. Now in terms of that, again, new processor, the N. 
150 that is inside, again, it's a marginal upgrade. Here's a rough idea of how it stacks up against the N100 from before, the last refreshed version. You can see that it's just about 200 points higher on Passmark as a synthetic benchmark reference. So yeah, depending on if you're looking at single core or multi-core performance, it's really just a 10 to 20% incremental bump, which is to say not really at night and day. If you have the previous N100 powered version of this computer, it might not be enough to warrant an upgrade just on the merits of performance alone. However, if you're in the market for a new mini PC, you haven't upgraded for at least a couple of generations, you've been eyeing one or haven't tried one before, of course this just offers a slightly better starting point. Also, one more point I wanted to reiterate is even though we have those two full-size HDMI ports, again, that Type-C supports display output as well, so you are able to use that instead if you prefer. Furthermore, Melee claims that they've upgraded the RAM as well to a DDR5 standard, which should be even faster compared to, say, DDR3 or DDR4 from previously, giving you even faster read and write speed. So if you're multitasking, opening up programs installed on the computer, it should feel faster than ever. That being said, keep in mind that the RAM configuration that you choose can be further upgraded once you buy it. That component is soldered on, unlike the SSD. So again, if you need a little bit more RAM, definitely purchase the version you need up front. Furthermore, here's a quick size comparison with some other mini PCs. This kind of box style is also quite popular and of course has a fan inside. So next to it, the quieter series, as you can tell, is going to be even slimmer, actually quite small and portable. And from a cold boot, it takes only around 8 seconds to get into the Windows desktop, so relatively quick. And we can also verify that out of the 512GB SSD version, there's around 434GB free for you to install other programs and files with. So there is a chunk which is taken up by the operating system. We can also verify that it's a fully licensed and activated version of Windows 11, and we do have the aforementioned 16GB of RAM as configured. And when it comes to navigating around the UI on Windows, it actually feels a little bit more responsive, to be completely honest compared to past budget mini PCs. So as you can see here, animations and windows are still loading along just fine, even though it does have a little bit more transition effects. Again, overall, it still is a pretty serviceable experience, I would say. It doesn't feel too clunky. And although you might see some micro jitters at some points, it's still not bad. So the N150 is keeping up with general system navigation just fine. Now jumping into the browser, let's actually take a closer look at performance. If we try just loading back some different pages, like the Verge here, relatively complex, desktop top site, plenty of different videos as well as ads and scrolling elements on the page, but as you can tell here it's actually doing Overall, not too shabby. Wi-Fi antenna reception strength has also been good in my testing. Getting around three to four bars, even though we're a little bit further away from the router at this moment. That is despite the chassis of this mini PC being really compact and small. So obviously all the parts have to be more tightly integrated, but still seems to be not too problematic when it comes to staying connected at the very least. So I'm glad to report that in 2025, again, even on budget PCs like this, you no longer have to be waiting too long when it comes to just, again, basic computing needs like browsing the web. Now definitely feeling smoother compared to equivalent computers in this price range that we've seen previously. So not bad. And the 16 gigs of RAM ensures that you can keep around a dozen tabs open in the browser for my testing without too many problems cropping up. Maybe at times you have to wait just a split second longer versus a true flagship computer when it comes to CPU. Loading and also scrolling along the page still seems relatively smooth without too much lag going on. Similarly, let's try loading back a YouTube video as a demonstration of streaming and see how it handles a clip. Let's crank up the resolution to something like 4K for the maximum, and also let's pull up stats for nerds. So we can see a couple of drop frames at the very beginning of the video, but this one is relatively long, basically needing a moment there to initially render and have everything snap into focus before it then begins to play back relatively smoothly. So it's still doing a adequate job, I would say. So I can also skip ahead to another part of the video, and after a split second, and as you can tell there, the video continues to play back. So it's not too problematic. If you're using this for YouTube, Netflix streaming, connecting it to a TV, it can still be a perfectly sufficient media entertainment box. And then obviously, if you're dialing it down to 1080p, it's going to be even faster in terms of the loading speeds. And it's already doing pretty good. As you can tell, they're almost instantaneous when it comes to scrubbing, uh, as well as just general playback still remaining quite smooth overall. And those remarks are echoed when it comes to office computing needs. It's not too surprising that hardware like this is perfectly capable of running PowerPoint, Excel, Word documents really without any problems. Of course, you can choose the Google Doc versions as well, and it still fares just fine when it comes to even running some more complex equations. Again, jumping back and forth between slides, it still feels relatively smooth and performant, all thanks to the 16 gigabytes of RAM built on in. 
And similarly, if you're doing some light coding work, I would say emphasis here on light because of the entry level hardware. But if you're just doing a little bit of maybe data science work, you can also leverage tools like Google Collab and using cloud services. And you can definitely still run some Python and basic office work. And briefly revisiting the synthetic benchmark scores from Passmark, even though this is just a rough reference, because in this case, I think the real world performance has been surprisingly quite stable. But as you can tell here, it's clocking in around 5,490 on Passmark for multi-thread and in single threads around 1,900 released here at the end of 2024. So still a relatively current gen chipset. Again, this one is all about the efficiency and value for money. So you can see it's a little bit faster again than the previous N100, although you can also see versus some more flagship grade processors even of yesteryear, like the Apple M1 Silicon has around 14,000 on the equivalent pass mark score. So it's roughly two and a half times less performant than some of those more expensive uh, processors on the market, roughly more in line with something like an Apple A13, which is a mobile chip from a couple of years back. But at the same time, it also depends on what you're comparing it with. For example, a couple of years back, the equivalent from Intel in their seller online was the N3450, also found in $200 mini computers and laptops. And if you guys remember, this chipset, which was previously popular, only scored around 2000 on Passmark instead. So compared to that, we are already getting a generational bump. Now we're getting more than double the performance on an equivalent level processor. And similarly, if you're looking at, again, older generation Core i3s and i5s from a couple of years ago in previous generation architecture, it also ranked in a similar level when it comes to the Passmark score. So you're basically looking at performance now, which is in line with a mid-range processor from a couple of years back, which has now become the baseline even on an entry-level chip. So the takeaway is, again, performance is actually a little bit better than maybe what you were expecting or remembering from the early days of netbooks, for example, where an equivalent Intel Atom or Celeron chip would have been as slow as molasses, but that's really no longer the case anymore. We have been seeing some of those incremental improvements, even though this one isn't a night and day difference versus the N100. We've been seeing this gradual pattern for a while now, and if we actually zoom out and look at the bigger picture, it's still contributing to an overall level of performance and fluidity, which is respectable for what it is. And again, I appreciate the fact that on an entry-level model like this, we are seeing a bit more RAM as well as a bit more storage compared to the past. And when it comes to doing some casual gaming, for example, Crash Bandicoot, it's more of the retro emulation games that you're playing back. It actually remains a pretty smooth experience. Here's also Doom as another example. I've also seen a couple of side-by-side -side comparisons with the previous N100, and the general consensus seems to be that the N150 is just, again, a marginal incremental bump in terms of performance. So, for example, the FPS at times might be around 10 frames or so faster and similarly it might be using around 10% less of the CPU slash GPU load so it might be using around 80% of system resources on a older style game like Mario Kart compared to maybe occupying 90% if you were on the N100 so there's some small bumps there maybe in a vacuum it might be harder to really delineate or feel that difference but if you're looking at them side by side it's still nice to see and then slightly newer titles like Fortnite can still play back all right if you're on lower graphic settings averaging around 30 to 35 FPS, as you can tell here. Similarly, here's Genshin Impact, as you can tell, also averaging around the same ballpark as newer titles. Again, keeping in mind, you have to play back at some of the lower graphic settings, and you may see some drop frames here and there occasionally. That being said, if you are looking at newer AAA-style games, it would still be recommended to have a more, of course, high-end CPU, GPU instead of your computer, as well as you can consider cloud gaming options like Amazon's Luna, Microsoft's xCloud, for example, as long as you have a reliable enough internet connection, you can play back those titles on more powerful hardware via streaming. But generally speaking, again, for retro emulation gaming, it's still perfectly sufficient. So for light casual gaming, including again, retro emulation, it can be a decent option. And then last but not least, for some light creative work, including photo editing, as well as some light video stitching, can be decent if you're just looking at maybe 1080p or full HD videos. If you're getting into the territory of 4K video editing, though, I would still probably push you in the direction of a slightly more mid-range chipset by 2025 standards just to give you a little bit more performance especially in the GPU side so that your rendering speeds when it comes to exporting those files will be faster. On here for example if you're exporting a one minute clip in 1080p it's only going to take around one minute but if you are exporting that in 4k it's going to take significantly longer, around five to six minutes. So it's going to really stack up if you're adding even more animations, transition effects, and your video length increases. Just keep that in mind. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of this Melee Quieter 4C mini PC. 
And overall, even though it's just an incremental bump compared to what we've seen from previous generations like the N100, so it's not worth upgrading if you have that version yet, it's still nice to see this trend continue over time. So if you zoom out on the time scale of things, we can see how these smaller incremental improvements still lead up to something more meaningful over the course of a couple of generations. So that means if you haven't upgraded your computer in a couple of years, then it actually might be a good moment to consider something like this. You're getting better performance than ever as well as more RAM and storage than past configurations in a similar price bracket. So those are all nice attributes to see here. So again, for just casual computing in general, again, keeping in mind this thing is super tiny, lightweight, and silent, it still offers, I think, a decent choice overall. Not bad in terms of just general system navigation. And overall, I haven't really encountered too significant thermal throttling. Although if you're maxing out the CPU and RAM 24-7 doing really heavy loads, then perhaps that's a reason to consider the Mealy Overclock series instead instead, which has a slightly larger chassis as well as a built-in fan to sustain performance at higher loads for longer, although that one also sells for just a little bit more and draws a bit more power because of the energy needed to run the fan. So there are some trade-offs there, but for again, an entry-level basic mini PC, this is still giving us a solid enough baseline performance, I would say. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. Overall, still quite solid, even though it's a familiar design that we've seen across a couple of gens now, that has been the Mealy Quieter 4C mini PC.